Hello everyone, I'm Carly and welcome to Nerding for Nature, formerly known as The Last Grown Up in the Woods. Today I'm going to be doing some sciencing. Um, we're going to be looking at just how good a survival blanket really keeps you warm. Of course, comparing my own experiences or other people's won't really work because that's subjective. It's at different times, different temperatures, different elevations, all of this stuff, and it wouldn't work unless I had a sample size of hundreds of people. So instead I'm using Jello. I'm actually going to be looking at a couple different factors. I'll do it all in one big experiment. There were tons more I wanted to look at. So I've got six different jars here and I'm going to set it all up in six different ways. Our first will be our control. It will just be a glass of jello out in the cold all by itself. The second will just have a little mylar survival blanket wrapped around it. The third will be wearing some clothes or this wool sock. The fourth will have clothes and a mylar blanket. And for these last two, I'm going to try to settle the debate about whether emergency blanket should go on the inside or the outside of a sleeping bag. So to do that, I will dress them up in their sock clothes. Luckily, I have four identical socks, so all my jellos will be wearing the same clothes. Then I will wrap one of them in its mylar blanket, stick it in the sleeve of this jacket, and put it outside. The other one will get stuck in the sleeve of this jacket first, the mylar blanket wrapped around it. I'm going to set them outside, check them every six minutes, and see which one freezes first. The reason I'm choosing every six minutes is that I want to put these a minute apart um, just because I obviously can't check all six at the same time. Okie doke, let's, let's get started. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, well that's them. We're seven minutes in. I'm not actually gonna open these up until I see the control doing any setting. Um, so this is our control. Closed an emergency blanket, naked with an emergency blanket. Just closed. And then over here, and that sleeve is obviously the emergency blanket on the outside and that one's on the inside. I had to add a little bit more mylar to each of those because they were, um, the, the one with the mylar on the outside wouldn't wrap around and then it was only fair that I added it to the inside because we want this to be as fair as possible, even if it's not quite um, lab conditions that we have. Yeah, my face is cold. <sighs> I should go get a bath while I wait. Okay, camera, you need to guard these jellos from the dogs. Got it? Okay, we are almost 20 minutes in and it's starting to get a little bit viscous. Maybe on the next round I'll, I'll check the other ones. Okay, let's, let's take a look. Oh yeah, that's getting really close to being set. So we'll take a look at our next little batch. This is still pretty liquid. Next is just the mylar blanket. Like if you look, it's almost set. This one's getting kind of viscous, but it's not quite there yet. And just the one in the clothes. Oh, it's doing quite well too. Okay, let's give her a few more minutes. At 32 minutes, we are looking, it's pretty much set. Yeah, look, I can turn it upside down. See, I'm doing sciencey things. Got to write this stuff down. It's thicker, but it's still pretty liquidy. Okay. Oh, this is actually getting close. I can't turn it upside down yet, but it's getting close. And this one's thicker but nowhere near jello stage. I'm gonna give these ones a go. So this is a wrapper on the inside. This one's barely even gotten thick. Same thing with this one. I think the problem with these ones is that for one thing, I can't, like, this doesn't make for good science. Like, I haven't wrapped them in a similar way. It will be hard for me to gauge which one's better. I have a phone appointment in 20 minutes, so I can't sit around waiting for them. 
And plus it takes me so long to get them wrapped and unwrapped. Who knows how much that time being exposed to the cold has an impact. It's really hard to say. One thing, some of you might be wondering why, why bother with a sock and that's just because like most of us are wearing clothes when we go out into the wilderness. But even in a situation where they're wearing um, like t-shirt and shorts, it's well documented that as soon as it's touching your skin, then it cools you down right away. Because this mylar isn't an insulator, it's reflecting radiant heat back at you. So when it's over top of you, you're actually air is actually being your, your insulator. And so when it's touching your skin, you lose that insulator, and the cold from outside just goes straight through that onto your skin. Plus, it can make people sweat, and then of course cold sweat is not a good thing for preventing hypothermia. I'm going to give up on these ones, but let's check out the other ones once more. Okay, this one is still frozen, still hypothermic. Oh, getting a little bit first stage hypothermia right here. Oh, can we turn it upside down? Oh, mylar blanket has succumbed to hypothermia. Oh, oh, I can, I can't, oh, well now I can turn it upside down. Okay, so it does come off this edge. Um, jolting it might make it harder to set later, unfortunately. Um, yes, just sock is in late stage hypothermia. Okay, let's give them a few more minutes. I would say we're at like stage two hypothermia with that one. Still getting gloopy. Still not bad. It's not sticking to the top, but if I hadn't dropped it earlier, I'm pretty sure this would be this would be toast. Yeah. Okay, so we've just got one left. So I'm gonna go inside and eat lunch. Three guesses if you can ha guess what I'm having for dessert, and the first two don't count. <laughs> That's one thing I wanted to note because I came in here between the last two rounds and I did this. I held them up both up like this and this one was significantly colder and then I switched to just to make sure and it, this one's still significantly colder. Um, so this one was the one that had the mylar on the outside and I think the reason for that was of, of course when I realized that the mylar wasn't wrapping all the way out around I cut another piece and then to um to uh, kind of complete the wrap. And then I added that extra piece to this one just to kind of make it fair. But of course that left a hole, an extra crack. Well, that doesn't make them like c that comparable. In a way, it does give some insight about which is better. It would be harder to get the Mylar blanket to wrap all the way around your sleeping bag. And especially as you're moving around to, to avoid getting those cracks. Whereas if it's inside your sleeping bag, you can make sure it's wrapped around yourself nice and tight as long as you have some clothes to keep um, a bit of an airspace between the mylar blanket and your skin. I'll be back when that last one freezes. I'm going to go eat some lunch and feed this cat. Okay, just coming in with some results. At 32 minutes, our control jello um, set and succumbed to the cold. At 44 minutes, the one with just the mylar blanket set. Um, at 55 minutes of one with a sock but no mylar blanket set and at one hour and 10 minutes the one with the sock and the mylar blanket set. So there's definitely a difference. What this does tell me is that good clothes are very important. Well, obviously Jell-O is not burning calories and producing its own body heat. It's not quite the same as a, as a, as a body but it does give you a good idea that um, the mylar blankets do help but what helps even more is having a good warm sock or you know good winter clothes okay that's it folks thanks for coming along keep your eye out for my new website that's going to be coming out called nerding for nature it'll be coming with a giveaway so yeah keep your eyes peeled for that follow me follow me on social media if you haven't already i'll put all those li links below i'm having trouble talking my goodness um so long and see you around folks i gotta come up with a new tagline